Now, I want you to look at something so we keep looking at what the Lord's doing right now with us because I think we're living in probably one of our most prophetic moments. I want you to know that. It is one of the most incredible moments that God has intended. I want to say this to the young people we were praying for them earlier. God has a way that he's going to call you up in this season. Now, get ready. You're not going to have to be wondering what you're supposed to be doing. God's going to call you up and call you in. And uh, he has ways of doing that. See, I was in pre-med when I was in, I, I actually started in uh, 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 several advanced classes when I was in high school. And so when I was in college, I started out in pre-med, and all of a sudden, God dealt with me. And he met me, and he visited me, and I'm at a Baptist Student Union State Convention, and they're doing that, uh, that card they do for missions. And... Uh, and I'm not, I was n- never really a very good Baptist, but they were doing that card, and, and all of a sudden I heard the voice of the Lord say, I've called you for the healing of the nations. Well, I just assume, and this was exactly what came out of my mouth. I cannot believe that you would send me eight years to med school, then make me go to Ethiopia <laughs> to be a doctor. And yet, I know God, and I know his voice, and I know how he operates. So I just took my little card and went forth, written on there, call for the healing of the nations, especially Ethiopia. I mean, I had a choice. I could either negate his voice, or I had a choice to go with it. Now... Something happened. I just spoke to Ethiopia yesterday, uh, sent a message to the prime minister of Ethiopia who won the Nobel Peace Prize this past year. I would have never taken me the route God took me. Now, I want you to remember that. He has a route for you. He knows how to get you to your there. He knows how to redeem what you never thought he could redeem. He knows how to move you into all you're going to do. So what he intended for you to do, you'll do. Now, for me to get to Ethiopia and speak to all the leaders and government and Christian leaders, it took 47 years for him to work something out of me. Now, hear what I'm saying to you. So when I stood up with these big meetings, all I could think was, boy, Lord, was did you have to really deal with me over what I wrote on that card when I was 18? It took 47 years later before I could fulfill that. And the week we were there is when they had the coup, the day before we got on the plane. And I know the Lord well enough to know, might as well be there for the coup. (laughs) In other words, I wasn't going to go just because they were having a coup and they were going to kill all the government leaders, and I was speaking to all of them. It only had taken him 47 years to get me to go. You see what I mean? He has incredible ways to deal with you because he knows your gift. He knows that he's making room for your gift. He knows what he's going to do. And sometimes you're going to be just clueless about it. Now, this is prophetic because we are in a different era. What's being so difficult for people is they're still trying to live in last season. That ain't going to happen. And I'm going to tell you that. We might as well know things have shifted and they are starting to accelerate. And you're going to have to say, Lord, take me with it. Move me on in. 
uh, I can either hide out, I can go try to, uh, I, was not, I, I wasn't any good being at home, so I've traveled for 40 years. You see what I mean? It wasn't his plan. He knew I wasn't supposed to do what the normal person was going to do. So I had to, and I, why I said that this morning, I had to overcome every fear. If I had a fear rise up, I did it. I just went ahead and stepped beyond it. Now, fear is a spirit, and I want us to talk about it. It's both an, a valid emotion and a spirit. So you're going to have to get to a place in your life, especially going into this season ahead, that you can divide it. So that you don't get over into presumption, so you don't get careless. Matter of fact, before the group that went to Washington, D.C. in this last, and I, they asked me to send them out. And I said, I'm going to send you out, but this time it's not going to be what you think. That's how the Lord told me. I said, it's going to get crazy. It's going to get chaotic. You're going to have to look around every corner before you go around it. That was my exact word to it. Now, we're living in a different time. And I love the book of Daniel because it speaks to me so much about what the Lord is trying to get through to us right now, Daniel 7. We're going to look at it, and then I'm going to show you some things. And before you leave here tonight, you're going to be doing better. You've been through lots of... I told Paul, I'm, I'm going to write a new book, How to Make It Through Hell with Ten Easy Steps. I mean... We've got to know you, you're going to have to face things off. And that's what this says here in Daniel chapter 7. It says the ancient of days will come to a place that he will rise up. And I kept looking and I saw the ancient of days. Now, why did he keep looking? It goes on to say here in this particular passage, it says because what happens is the enemy, our enemy, chooses to wear down the minds of the saints. Now, if ever we have lived in a season, it is a season that the enemy has tried to wear your mind down. Now, your mind is just not up here. I mean, you need to have some sense up here. But your mind is right here. Put your hand right here on your heart. And it says the enemy would, through constant testings, wear down our minds where we can't even think straight. And before long, and it says how he'll do it. It says he'll change times and he'll change laws. See, the enemy is a legalist. And therefore, I love what I was saying this morning, how the Lord always has loopholes to get beyond the legalism of the enemy. He'll use legalism and he will use time to get us out of sync with our alignment with the Lord. He can do it for a nation. You see it all through the Word of God. But God, everybody say, but God. <laughs> well, he has ways to keep us in his perfect timing. He has ways to keep us moving. And in the midst of our testing, he wants your thoughts, we prayed about it earlier, to be clear. He doesn't want you to be so scattered you can't get a good thought. See, the enemy, one of his curses is he scatters. We are coming into a season of gathering. And God's connecting people all over. He's doing incredible things to put us together in a new way. And so, once you start seeing what's out there, a lot of us have a hard time seeing beyond our fear. I remember getting one time on an airplane 
before I got on the airplane, I, we had to make a big shift in our family. And so Brian Corman, who's been with me 25 years, and Pam and another lady who had been working with us for a long time, and myself, we said, well, we're going to fast and pray for three days. We're going to ask the Lord to give us revelation over how we shift. It was at the end of July, and we had to make some decisions. And I was speaking in Washington State, and uh, so I was just telling Pam that. I said, she said, how have you done on this fast? I said, well, just the way you think I've done on this fast. I've hated every second of this. But we've made it through two days. That was my exact word. Then we get on the plane. All of a sudden, we take off, and we're flying. It's a, a, a large plane, and they make an announcement that the plane's on fire and that uh, we've got some big problems. And uh, I'm just sitting there and saying, Lord. And they said, we're, uh, you're going to have to brace as if we're going to crash or explode. I mean, it was the big, it was the full meal deal. And uh, so, well, I've had lots of bad plane flights, but this was different. And they said, we're going to dump out as much fuel and hopefully that it won't catch on fire when we're trying to dump it out so we can turn around and go back to the airport. So, we're in this process and I'm just sitting there reading. Well, we have to brace. We have to do all that. It's sort of dramatic. And we land. And this guy that is sitting next to me in first class said, you must be a Christian. I said, uh, devoted. And I said, why would you say that? He said, well, I just noticed how calm and confident you were. He said, why were you so confident that we weren't going to die? I said, well, hopefully you'll understand this. I said, the Lord has put me on a three-day fast. I said, I just finished the second day. (laughs) And I know the Lord well enough that he's going to make me finish the third day. (laughs) That guy started laughing so hard. He said, I would, (laughs) that was not the answer I was going to expect. I said, I know him too well. I know him. He wasn't going to let me die. He wouldn't let me go out this easy. 